Good afternoon. I'm Anne Green Gilbert. I'm director of the Creative Dance Center and Kaleidoscope Dance Company. Well, bringing dance into the classroom came about from my first two years of teaching elementary school because I had no idea how to teach math, science, reading, language arts, but I did know dance. And as a student myself in elementary school, I was that kinesthetic child who had a lot of trouble learning and a lot of trouble sitting still. So I thought, well, I, I don't really know how to, how to teach this curriculum, but let's make a bee with our body. Let's spell these words with our body, because I, I do know how to move. <laughs> I don't know how to sit behind a desk and teach cursive writing, but let's, let's draw these letters in the air with our body parts. Let's learn cursive writing by drawing with body parts and tracing on the floor. So it really developed in those first two years of teaching elementary school, because I didn't know what else to do except dance. And the test scores of my children went way up, their behavior went way up. I was teaching in a difficult school at that time. And I thought, wow, this, this is amazing. If I could have learned this way, um, I might have done better in school. So when I went into higher ed, I, I did a government research project on teaching language arts through movement. And the results were very amazing. Test scores going up two and three grades. And that's when I wrote my first book, Teaching the Three Hours Through Movement, and started really working in public schools uh, with principals, with administrators, writing arts curriculum, and just showing people there's such a much better way to learn than sitting behind a desk all day long. And it's just sort of exploded from there. Who inspires me to teach are my students, and also my colleagues. I mean, every day I see my students growing and developing. They're turning into really intelligent people, not just technical dancers, but intelligent people who can talk about dance, who think about dance. And I'm talking even about six-year-olds who can actually reflect on dance, who choreograph meaningful dances. You know, even babies inspire me with all of their developmental movement. My dancers with Parkinson's who get off meds because they're doing movement in the studio and at home. And of course my colleagues, and my colleagues all over the world. I attend conferences and I present workshops and I meet wonderful, fascinating colleagues all over the world. Oh, Lord. It up. We get stressed. Let's bind up that flow. Stop breathing. Does that feel familiar? To see just in one class how a child can turn from a very shy child into performing and choreographing at the end of class. I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. Not, I mean, you see tremendous development over the months and the years, but I see I see changes even in single classes. So that, that transformation, uh, the smiles at the end of class, uh, the joy, that's, that's immeasurable. I'd love to see much more dance in assisted living homes and working with people with MS and Parkinson's and just dementia. I think it's music and movement really changes the brain. All the research shows this and I just, I want to encourage more people to work at both ends of the spectrum. I think we really need to work with the infant population and parents because that's where it all begins and if we can get babies moving through these patterns naturally, we won't see so many issues in, in the schools. I think the most important thing, and it sounds kind of corny, but Dance should be fun. Dance should be accessible. It should be playful. Yes, we, we need to have skills and we need to have improvisation in every class. But most of all, dance should be for everybody and it should be a joyful, transformative experience.